Hey, what's up? This is Abed here. For this week, we're taking a look at a shoe that I really wanted to like. This is the Nike Air Max 270 ISPA. This is the second ISPA release. I missed out on the first one, unfortunately, but it's a semi-limited product line based on futuristic ideas, changing existing silhouettes, uh, with some unique features, some interesting materials and all that sort of thing. This shoe in particular, uh, as you can see, it's futuristic, it's rugged, it's all black, it's water resistant, so it's the perfect tech wear combination and therefore it should be a shoe that I absolutely love, right? Right? But anyway, this retailed at £159, I think, which is approaching the $200 mark. So let's take a little bit of an in-depth look at the styling, the features, the performance, all that kind of stuff. There's no point skirting around this shoe's standout feature. Nike have obviously been working with Venom for this one, because this is straight out of the Symbiote style catalogue. This thing looks so edgy, it makes me want to part my fringe in the opposite direction. Aesthetically, it's very unique. It certainly adds a futuristic element to the shoe, and also I think it's a major key in these appearances much more rugged and much more heavy duty than most pairs of shoes, certainly than most uh, Air Max 270s that are on the market. The cages are made of flexible plastic, not unlike those jelly shoes that you might have worn as a kid, which means that they're very durable, they're easy to clean, they're water resistant, and as you might see from the footage, they're also really shiny. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that shininess, I'm hoping that it's something that will dull over time with use, I'm sure it will, if these get a little bit scuffed it will probably take the sheen off a bit, but to an extent I feel like this cage and certainly that shiny overshadows the rest of the upper. From a distance at least, it's kind of hard to see the exact nature of this cage and the way that it interacts with the rest of the shoe. I think the colorway is partly to blame here in that the, although it's not actually black behind that cage, it's quite a dark gray so there's not much contrast and it doesn't really stand out that much. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this might be a shoe that would look better in a color other than black. Um, the Nike swoosh on one side is this light gray color, and you can kind of semi see that, which looks quite cool. So maybe if the whole upper was made of that slightly lighter gray color, then that could be quite cool. You just have a little bit of contrast, but it would still be a black looking shoe. Although they're pretty crazy, the other colorways I think do a really good job of showing the interaction between the cage and the material behind it. You've got those white and orange ones, for example, where you can really see that big kind of orange swoosh underneath, and I think that's super cool. Or maybe if it didn't go over the toe box as well, so it was a bit more like a traditional cage, but like the symbiote biological hand grasping version. Actually, that sounds pretty cool. Can we get Tony Stark on the phone? The sole is also a really important part in getting that rugged nature across, and of course it doesn't disappoint here. Not only have you got that very chunky outsole with that really, really thick traction and grip that you can even see popping up over the toe a little bit, but the midsole is similarly thick and chunky and that rises up to the big fat booty that is the Air Max 270 unit on the back. It is presented alongside these heel guards and the Air Max unit, at least on the black version, is coated. So it looks less out of place, I think, than on a lot of other Air Max 270 shoes. But nonetheless, this thing has got some chonk. And while we're at the back, you'll find this webbing detail, which is quite nice and cohesive. It's obviously designed to mimic molly webbing and that kind of military pouch strap system. But of course, you can't actually put anything on here because that would be ridiculous. You'll find that mock webbing repeated all the way down the tongue as well, which I think is quite cool. And again, it adds an element of cohesion between the front and the back of the shoe. Another big unique aspect of this shoe is that they don't just rely on laces for tightness. They've clearly been taken a few pages out of the commuter playbook for this one, because in similar fashion, there is this toggle tightening system at the back. And you can use that to tighten in the whole of the symbiote cage. If you've ever worn a commuter though, you'll know that that system then didn't really provide great great tightness. My commuters are a full size down to actually get them to fit properly. I'd like to say that they solved this problem with this shoe and in a sense they did by adding the laces as well so you've got a lot more flexibility with the tightness. Although if you actually pull this system up properly, so it's like all the way down up, I feel like it's a little bit too tight. It's too restrictive. It turns that nice cuddle into an overly attached girlfriend death grip. So while it is fun putting these on and then like tightening these up nice and fast, when you eventually decide that you want to loosen it or slacken it off a bit as you may well do, then it's not actually that easy to do. You have to hold the toggle bit kind of awkwardly and then pull down on this triangular ring and that will loosen up the lacing structure a bit. 
The concept of a system that can provide unilateral tightness alongside lacing is certainly a valuable one and I think it's really interesting, but the execution for me, it adds complication for not that much gain beyond it being a bit of a party trick and something that's cool and interesting and something to impress your techwear friends with. Although that is pretty important. Maybe that's a little bit hit and miss, but it's clear that with these kinds of features, Nike are putting in an effort to make this shoe very different and unique to a lot of other things that are on the market. That continues with some small details and some branding elements. You'll find ISPA branding inside the tongue, you'll find it on the insole as well, and of course you'll find it on the heel on one side too. There's a little Nike swoosh on the tongue and there's some bigger ones on each side of the shoe underneath the cage. So they're kind of semi-visible, the lighter gray one especially does kind of peek out quite nicely, which I think is cool. Using the React tongue shape alongside the Air Max 270 unit is also pretty cool and unique. I do like that tongue and I think this is the only shoe that combines the two. The material of the upper itself I also think is unique. It's similar to the Commuter SE. It's, it's like a waterproof ripstop type thing, but it feels like it has a little bit more stretch than the Commuter did. I'm not sure if that's the case, but yeah, it feels a little bit better to me. Even the box is pretty interesting. It's got this ISPA print all over it. It's got a printed on Nike swoosh over and above the regular one, just so that when you're not using these to stomp around in puddles, you're sitting them in your shelf somewhere nice, you can still feel that little bit superior that these are a little bit special, a little bit better than your average Nike. Speaking of stomping around, the outsole clearly offers large amounts of traction and that's going to come in handy in any kinds of bad weather or if you're scaling rooftops looking for your next outfit pick or whatever, I'm sure these will do you just fine. The nylon upper that I mentioned just now alongside the gusseted tongue and the plastic of the cage collectively means that from a water resistance perspective this is going to be pretty good. Although if these are similar to the commuters and in some respects they seem to be, the breathability on those was also not that great either so this is the kind of shoe that you'll probably get quite warm in unless it's nice and cold outside. I have had limited chance to test this myself as I say I'm basing that on the similarity to the commuters. The sizing of these I thought was just fine I bought these in a UK 11 which is my true size and I find that they fit just fine especially with the fact that you can adjust the fit with the lacing and with that little toggle system as well. There are certainly some comfort features on these as well the sole is nice and cushioned and squashy especially with that big fat Air Max unit at the back. It does take a little bit of getting used to because it is very heel heavy, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cushiony. I like it. The cages offer a little bit more structure and rigidity than if it was just relying on the material alone, but it's not quite as grippy as a kind of sock or neoprene construction would be. So the sole is really comfy, the upper is okay too. Overall I'd say not quite as comfortable as the Presto Utility which is the closest thing I have to these, but certainly very wearable for an all day shoe. So overall this shoe definitely lives up to the Improvise Adapt Overcome name. It's comfortable enough for all day wearing, it's protective enough for all conditions, and it has a whole load of interesting and unique features and design elements which you won't really find on that many other shoes. And I really like that it's just different to anything else that's on the market right now. We're kind of, we're in an age where everything is deconstructed or a big chunky dad sneaker or it's inside out or something like that. And this is just, yeah, it's so different. It's very futuristic. It's using these very different materials. And yeah, that's to be commended. I think it's pretty cool. But despite all that, there's just a few things that aren't doing it for me. The shininess of the cage is, well, shiny. The difficulty in appreciating the multi-layered construction of these, specifically in the black version, and the other colorways not really being anywhere near as wearable as these. And the lacing innovations, while very cool and unique, seem better when they're not really fully utilized. And those things together kind of dampen my excitement for this shoe. Don't get me wrong, if I wanted a proper all-weather sneaker boot that is going to look good with futuristic stuff, tech wear, technical fashion, then I would reach for these in my wardrobe first over and above anything else that I've got in there. Probably over the Presto Utilities, although the upper isn't quite as comfortable as those, they certainly look a lot more interesting, and I think over time with the higher shape and with this plastic cage, I imagine that they will prove more durable than those. So they are cool, but they're not quite the techwear banger that I wanted them to be. So those are my thoughts on the Nike Air Max 270 ISPA. Do let me know what you guys think of these. I feel like these are going to be a little bit divisive. Some people are definitely not going to like the Venom pattern, whereas, 
yeah, I think some people will really appreciate the fact that they are different and they are so outwardly futuristic. But anyway, let me know what you think of them down there in the comments. Are they something that you're likely to be picking up? I think they are still available, so if I find them anywhere, there will be links down there in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, you want to see some more techwear stuff, then please do give it a like. And of course, we will be back next week with another video. Shout out to Random Maker Film. That's really encouraging to hear, actually, that Enfant Leve are good with the customer service as well as just the products. So definitely another reason to buy from them because you know if you have a problem, you can take it back to them and they'll help sort it out. Shout out to Isaac, Trouser Boys, repping it in the comments. And shout out Inigo for the Amez2 fact. I'm not sure if that's where they got the name from, but if they did, that's pretty cool. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. There's going to be some little links going up at the top, the little square boxes that you can click on. And if you haven't subscribed, but you, you ended up here right at the end, then you must have liked this a little bit, in which case you should definitely click the subscribe button. And there's gonna be more techwear stuff, more cool fashion-y content coming up soon. So yeah, you can be the first one to watch it.